So how do you know if you've got a leaky gut? Well, you can test for it. Uh, a couple of tests, I used to order a lot of these tests, intestinal permeability tests. You give the, you know, the lab sends out a little kit and uh, they drink a solution of two sugars, lactulose and mannitol. Um, the uh, mannitol, you, and they collect their urine for six hours. And the mannitol shows up in the urine, lactulose is not supposed to show up in the urine. And if you have a bunch of lactulose in your urine, by definition you have a leaky gut. Uh, here's what the, um, <coughs> what the uh, result that you get from the lab. Uh, here's, uh, uh, you shouldn't have any more than one and a half percent of lactulose show up. This person had three percent, so they have a leaky gut. Um, used to order a lot of these. Um, this seems to be replaced by a newer blood test now. Is all you really need is called zonulin. Zonulin is a protein that your own body makes that loosens up the tight junction. There are times the body wants to loosen these up, but if you've got if, if um, you've got leaky gut, you've got lots of zonulin in your tissues, and they're correlating now. The more zonulin you have in your bloodstream, uh, the more leakier your gut probably is. So I'm probably going to start ordering zonulin tests instead of the uh, urine tests here. But, you know, I don't think I'm going to be ordering many of these either. I'm, I've been a doc 45 years, and I've been doing nutritional medicine for 35 of them. And um, I used to order these tests. I don't anymore because I realized the patients, the lab tests. You know, if they're coming in, they're eating a standard diet, they got swollen, inflamed joints, they got loose stools, they got leaky gut. The patient's telling you that they got that. And just to spend their money to, to document it, you know, yep, your test showed you had leaky gut. Well, I knew that when I walked in the office. And, and so I'm not ordering many of these. And, and if you, you're in the throes of some rip-roaring lupus attack or whatever, assume you got a leaky gut, you ought to get on the repair program that I'm going to outline in a minute. So, the food we eat determines the bacteria that live in our guts. When you eat a diet based on whole plant foods, like our anatomy would dictate here, good things happen. Um, the, some of the, the bad guys start fading away. And it has been clearly shown, a plant-based diet significantly alters uh, the bacteria living in our gut and uh, results in significant shifts in microbiomes. Um, and um, it alters the intestinal microbes in humans because high amounts of fiber result in increased short-chain fatty acid production, uh, which lowers the pH, and this keeps the bad guys from growing down there. So there's a bunch of mechanisms by which whole plant foods help your microbiome. Uh, even there are things in apples uh, will help. Uh, that's maybe that's why an apple a day keeps me away from my patients, I guess. Um, so. Uh, I want to see any of these people. I want to be so healthy, to, them to be so healthy, they don't need to come and see me. I want to go for a bike ride instead. Um, so, um, we're going to be talking about probiotics, yada, yada, all this stuff. But baseline, foundation, block to stand on, it's the food. Okay, it's the food. You can if you're eating cheeseburgers and pepperoni pizzas, you can take all the, the probiotics by the bottle. It ain't going to help you, okay? Feed the good guys and down in your gut there, and the gut will, help, will repair itself. <clears throat> you, you're growing a new gut lining constantly. Uh, you just want it to come in nice and stable and tight and normal, and putting this kind of fuel down there does that. So we're going to talk about some probiotics and supplements, all this stuff, but the foundation is healthy whole plant foods. <clears throat> Um, these kind of foods are rich in what's called prebiotics. They're the food for the good guys. And fructose oligosaccharides and inulin, don't worry about the names there. But they're, they're, trust me, there's good things in these foods uh, that foster the good guys' growth. Okay. So, if you've got a leaky gut, or you think you do, um, how, how do you repair it? I'm going to run through the protocol, but so your fingers don't get numb and, uh, and you miss half of what I'm saying. Um, I, everything I'm going to tell you now, I've already put on a webinar that's on my website. If you go to drclaver.com, uh, check out my healthy webinars. Uh, there's, a pro, there's a webinar called Leaky Gut. Is it real? What to do about it? So afterwards, or if you want to know about, more about this, go to my website and watch that webinar. And, uh, and it'll recap everything I'm going to tell you now. Okay, that said, remember, before we get into this, this is not a permanent condition. This is, uh, oh, I've got a leaky gut the rest of my life, my gut's leaky, you know, every, everything I eat is going to fall and flow out onto the floor. 
don't put this label on, don't scare yourself with this. Just like your skin is constantly growing, and new skin, as we're sitting here, new skin is being made in the deep layers of your skin and working its way up to the surface. Same thing's happening in your gut, and your gut doesn't want to stay leaky, it'll repair itself if you give it a break. So take your anxiety meter and turn it down to zero here, and just, uh, but there are things that we can do to help uh, this repair process happen, but the gut's repairing itself anyway. Okay, first, stop injuring it! Mm -hmm. If you hit yourself on the thumb of the hammer, oh, I'm on flame, gotta take some ibuprofen. And, uh, oh, and hit yourself on the hammer again, oh, hit your thumb on the hammer again. Oh, uh, if you keep hitting your thumb with a hammer, it's gonna stay inflamed. Stop injuring your gut, okay? Stop eating sugars of food, stop drinking alcohol, stop eating meat and antibiotics in it, stop taking antibiotics unless you know you need them. Stop the non steroidal anti inflammatories. Consider doing something uh, so you're not drinking chlorine every day. Um, uh, chlorine is volatile. You know that. It evaporates. You know that when you go in the swimming pool. You know, you can smell it coming off the water. If you just uh, let water sit out overnight, about 90 plus percent of the chlorine evaporates the next morning anyway. Um, but, there, but there's filtration units. There's things you can do in boiling it, etc. But think about not drinking chlorine. And again, if you're someone with inflammatory joint disease, etc., this is serious business for you. You want to take away every possible cause of, of upset down your gut there. Um, you want to rinse those detergents off as good as you can or, or just not use them. I'm sure there's some safer biological agents and running water works pretty good actually. Uh, so we're using the, you know, running in the dishwasher every couple of days instead of uh, constantly using this stuff. And how about brushing your teeth with baking soda or something that, that doesn't uh, cause uh, all this uh, antibacterial stuff to go down your throat. If you've got a leaky gut and you're symptomatic, yank out the things that are leaking through it. Stop the dairy protein, the most, most allergenic of all the proteins people eat. Uh, wheat protein, anything you think might be causing a problem and yank it out. Uh, there's, a, um, uh, there's a whole elimination diet thing you can go on to, but uh, uh, if, you, if you're trying to get hold of your uh, uh, inflammation somewhere, you know, yank out the foods that might be causing a problem. Eat a whole food plant-based diet, okay? <clears throat> for all the reasons I talked about. And then you're going to repair, help. Now, the gut's repairing itself anyway, but there are a couple of nutrients you get at the health food store that help those tight junctions firm up again and, and make the gut less leaky. One of them is called quercetin, uh, and it's made from uh, made fruits. And, um, and uh, take one twice a day. And this is for six weeks, uh, 12 at the most, okay? This is not for the rest of your life. You have to switch it now. Uh, you want to repair this once. And so, so get a bottle of these things and take one twice a day for six weeks. Uh, and, and if you'd like to do it, double that. You grow a new gut lining every six weeks. So this is two full cycles of gut lining coming in. And glutamine it helps the colon uh, tissues repair themselves as well. So, um, so 500 milligrams of quercetin and glutamine in, in, with breakfast and 500 again in, in dinner for a couple of months uh, would be an appropriate thing to do. Okay. And again, that's all on a webinar. Then there's the issue of reestablishing a carpet of healthy bacteria down in the gut. So here's where the issue of probiotics comes in. Probiotics, what does the word mean? Pro means for, bios is life, so probiotics, they are for life, as opposed to an antibiotic, which is against life. Okay. And these are the good guys, the beneficial bacteria and yeast, plus nutrients to help them grow down in the gut there. So where do they fit into all of this? Okay, <clears throat> um, they are the frosting on the cake, to use an inappropriate analogy, is the food, first of all, uh, and stop injuring it, second of all, and these uh, repair supplements, and yes, find the probiotics, okay. Now, when we first started, I showed you the names of some organisms that you like to see on the probiotic label. Here's why they're there. Lactobacillus plantarum has been shown to be very, the, what the metabolites it puts out are very stabilizing and anti-inflammatory. And there's a good literature that Lactobacillus is one of the real good guys, especially if you've got inflammation going on in your gut. Um, Lactobacillus rhamnosus detoxifies t uh, molecules that are produced that promote cancer down in your gut. And, uh, and, if, and if you're 
father, two uncles and brother all died of colon cancer at age 40 and you clearly got that propensity. Do you want to be on a whole food plant-based diet because it's the meat that largely spawns that, but uh, you, you want to be taken, you want to make sure you got a good population of lactobacillus rhamnosus down there. And, uh, and again, there's a, uh, there's a good uh, study about uh, how it fixes intestinal uh, uh, problems down there. Lactobacillus casei is really good for restoring the uh, mucosal architecture. And uh, there's a number of studies showing that. Lactobacillus acidophilus uh, does very good things. Uh, people who take it get less colds. Women uh, who are prone to urinary tract infections benefit if they take this on a regular basis. Uh, and folks with irritable bowel syndrome. I don't believe that this is a disease. I believe that bowel is irritable, but it's irritable because of what the owner of that bowel has been putting through it. Mm -hmm. That's your bowel. The colon is a very eloquent organ. It speaks very clearly. And if you've got gas and cramps and bloating every time you eat food X, that's your colon saying, don't put that down here. And I, can't, I, I wish I had a nickel for every patient with irritable bowel who went on a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. Hey doc, wow, man, my irritable bowel's going away. I'm passing these easy, soft bowel movements, yay. Published in the medical journal, duh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, bifidobacteria is another one uh, that's a good guy. Saccharomyces boulardii that I mentioned. So that's why when I go in the health food store and I'm thinking about buying a, pri uh, a uh, probiotic, that's why I want to see lactobacillus rhamnosus and bifidus and acidophilus and casei and plantarum and salivarius and longum on there. These are good guys that you want there. Okay, and this is, uh, you'll be able to play this recording back. You'll see these labeled again. Again, it's on my webinar at uh, drclapper.com. Okay. So you want a variety. You don't want just acidophilus. You don't want a single strain probiotic. You want the whole family. Okay.